Welcome back. It's a lesson about the American dream. And all you parents and kids out there cannot afford to miss this segment. Joining us right now is economics professor at Valencia College down in Florida, Jack Chambliss. Jack, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. I understand on uh, one of the first days of your class, which is predominantly sophomores, you asked the kids to get out, write a 10-minute essay on what the American dream means to them. And this year, the results were jaw-dropping. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, in addition to asking them what the American dream looks like for them, I then had them write specifically what they wanted the federal government to do to help them achieve that dream. Right. I took the essays from three classes, about 180 students, back to my office and over the next day poured over them. About 10 percent of the students uh, said that they wanted the government to leave them alone and not tax them too much and let them regulate their own lives. Uh, but over 80 percent of the students uh, said that in a, the, the American dream to them meant a house and a job and uh, plenty of money for retirement and vacations and things like this. But when it came to the part about the federal government, uh, eight out of ten students said that they wanted free health care, they wanted the government to pay for their tuition, they wanted the government to pay for the down payment on their house, uh, they expected the government to, quote, give them a job. Uh, many of them said that they wanted the government to tax wealthier individuals so right. that they would have an opportunity to have a better life. Here, so, uh, we, uh, well, I tell you what, Jack, we've got a little snippet from one of the essays. One of the kids wrote, as human beings, we are not really responsible for our own acts, and so we need government to control those who don't care about others. Now, as you describe it, where uh, the kids said, you know, they want free college, they want the down payment, free health care. Have they been watching? Do you feel that that is from this whole Occupy movement? They feel like they're part of the 99 and they want the 1% to give them the rest of their lives? Well, this essay was written before the Occupy movement really took hold. So uh, fundamentally, they had this belief uh, before uh, people in their cohort group took to the streets to demand the same sorts of things that they uh, wrote that they expected in, uh, in this essay that they wrote for me. Well, where do you think this sense of entitlement comes from? Well, certainly I think a big part of it comes from the public schools. I, I, I very, when I start talking to my students over the semester and ask them how much time the public schools spend on the principles of John Locke or Adam Smith or Hayek or some of the other people who very clearly said that we have a God-given right to life, liberty, and property, uh, but the government doesn't have a responsibility to provide things for us. When I ask them how much of this they learn in their classes, K through 12, they stare at me and they say, well, we've never heard these yeah. sorts of things. So the public schools are part of it. I do think that uh, the, the last 20 years or so we've seen a growing sense of entitlement by the American people. As you uh, probably have read, that we're in a situation now where 44 percent of the American people now are living off of some sort of government sure. benefit compared to only 29 percent back in the early 80s. Right. And I also think the last three years of having a, a president that appealed to the younger generation by saying that somehow people who are, are wealthier are, are a problem for us, much like Franklin Roosevelt told people uh, seven, 70 years ago, right. and that these people somehow should be sending their money to others. I think this is really caught on with a lot of students right. uh, and they and they believe now that somehow the tooth fairy uh, exists in Washington DC yeah addressed as Uncle Sam before you go you got to tell me about the experiment you do in your class where you have the you're essentially a pickpocket well yes the, the when I went back to class uh, the next time to meet with them I, I told them I'd read over their essays and I read some of the comments they had made and then I set them on a table and I asked everybody to pull out their wallets and their purses. And I picked one student in each class, uh, and when their wallet was in their hand, I grabbed their wallet out force, force, forcefully. And in one case, I grabbed a girl's purse, and I rifled through a purse, pulled out her wallet, pulled out all of her cash. Uh, and I said that part of my American dream was to have a cabin in northern Minnesota someday <laughs> so I could have a nice retirement. Yeah, and good. that this money was now going to help fund that American dream. And, of course, yeah. that set in motion explanation on, on why using the government to plunder people to support our American dream is fundamentally morally wrong, constitutionally wrong, and leads to a lot of economic, uh, economically bad events if we let sure. that idea gain, gain ground. He's a professor of economics at Valencia College down in uh, Florida. Jack, you better go back to class because you've got, uh, you've got a lot of heads to fill. Uh, we'll keep trying. Thank you. No kidding. We thank you very much for joining us live. All My right. pleasure.
All right. 